Hola, Kinalito, aka Mahari Selepe, the girl that calls for countries home. Welcome to my channel. Uh, shout out to the notification squad. You guys are always here supporting me. Love you guys. Uh, biggest shout out to um, Siabonga Tepani or Tepani. You have been first on my like last 10 uploads. So thank you so much. Guys, I really appreciate you all. Please, please join the family by subscribing. Please do subscribe and thank you so much for 1700 subscribers, 1700. So excited, guys. I am smelling that 2K. Guys, can we please get to 2K by June? 300, just 300. 300. Okay, I know for me, like 300, like it like takes the whole year for 300 people to subscribe. But I actually happen to have 5,000 friends on Facebook and, um, 2000 something likes on my facebook music page come on guys please please let's help my youtube channel grow welcome to my channel Today, it just seems like this week is just all been about church, you know. Um, I spoke about how I almost became a sinach on Monday and then on Wednesday, you know, we're just worshipping together. So today, I, I have to have those of you covered who love some gossip. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to talk about dating a church boy. Or rather, I don't know what to call it because I'm talking about my exes. They, they were both um, church boys, but um, they went to different churches, okay? Um, okay. I'm going to figure out what to call this topic. Okay, so you remember when I spoke about my three what what um, pastors, my, um, what did I call it? Love triangle with two pastors. Yes. So sometime during those two years, I met... Uh, this guy, I think it was, I was at this school. Uh, the, I was at this school. It was a multiracial school, and somehow, so I joined the school when I was in grade eleven. So somehow, my parents managed to get. We managed to negotiate um, so that you know my parents through their connections through the church, because it was a church school. We managed to get me to not do Afrikaans. So I did Sisutu first language privately. And I did English second language with a lot of Afrikaans people who did English first language. There's a lady who was teaching me Sisutu. So, um, we were very close to her. Uh, my, myself and, and, and three friends, because uh, we were all from uh, Bethel College, the three of us. And that's how we, you know, we got close. When we got to Helderberg. We saw, oh, you're here, you're here, oh, you know, so we were, we were all, we all became friends. So I would go to him and do my, um, Sisutu. Sometimes they would come with me, like, like I just became one of the kids, one of, of her, of her kids. So we sometimes, she sometimes took us with when she left campus, you know, uh, cause we, we were at the boarding school. They lived at the boarding school cause I think, um, uh, Pastor that was studying, uh, his ministry or he was working but anyway this campus has a lot of houses a lot of staff houses similar to where i lived uh, in butterworth uh, where i lived it was called it's called bethel college that's where my parents lived so um so men would take us to where he worked he worked outside campus he's a she worked outside campus she was a teacher i can't remember what the location was called so one time when we went on a Sunday, um, I think we went with the uh, pastor, we went to pick up Mem. I think she, she was having some classes or something, exam time, I can't remember what was happening. So he, he invited us to come with him to pick Mem. So anyway, when we were there, um, we're just sitting with the girls, we're just chatting, and then we see this guy walk past. Oh! <laughs> We are sitting, we're just chatting, and then the guy walk, walks past, and we're like, e. we look at each other like, mm, mm, mm. 
So this guy comes back. We're like, ah, guys, that guy is checking us out, man. He is looking this way. Who is he looking for? I wonder who, which one of us is he after? <laughs> okay, so I'll just explain to those who are not from South Africa or Lesotho or from, I don't know if other African countries are the same, but uh, I've lived outside Africa for 18 years now and life is very different this side, okay? Back home, people will stop you in the street to ask you out. It's normal. Boyfriends and girlfriends from primary school, people are asking each other out, okay? Um, I mean, I know even coming here, even in the UK, there were I mean, the kids who had boyfriends and girlfriends, but you don't get stopped in the, road, in the street um, like people meet in pubs. It's not a thing for people to talk to you on the street. Um, and then even in the in church, you know, we don't just our church community in the UK. I mean, even here, it's the boyfriend and girlfriend thing is not a thing. Okay. But in South Africa, yeah, and Lesotho, it is a thing. I don't know if things have changed since I left, since our time, but it was a thing. Okay. Everybody had, people had boyfriends, people had girlfriends. It's just a thing. Okay. Whatever your definition of the boyfriend and girlfriend is, I mean, it, it was usually, every, it was usually something very, very um, innocent, but people have boyfriends from preschool. You know, it's a thing. Like, it's a thing. Okay. So, I'm just explaining because um, I think also for my kids as well because, you know, I'm a bit of a strict parent. Ah, no. So, the guy was checking me out. He comes and he asks me to come. I'm like, he kills. So, anyway, he asked for my number. I think, no. I didn't even have a phone. Oh, I gave him, I think, the number for the res. Yes. We had some payphone in the res that like everybody used those card phone green telecom card phones um okay i can't quite remember how everything panned out but eventually ended up going out with this guy so we'd see him when we were all would always like ask ma'am or ask uh pastor oh when are you going to uh that place it was near it was it's a stellenbosch location oh when are you going there can we come along you know, and of course, Mfunda and I would just chat or sometimes just walk to the shops and back. Like, there wasn't much happening. And then Mfunda started coming to, to Helderberg to see me. You know, he would come, he would... Guys, this guy was so sweet. He was so sweet. Sweetest guy. Sweetest guy. Okay? Sweet, humble guys. So anyway, Mfunda knew my... Um, you know my beliefs you know I, we spoke about it and i you know i told him you know he knew i'm adventist um you know he was pentecostal i think he was but he was very much christian you know and um yeah i realized this thing of ours was getting serious you know mfundo respected my boundaries you know i mean we never had a chance to meet outside somewhere else. we were always outside when we met because he came to see me at school we just walk maybe he'll be sometimes he'll tell me oh can you come meet me i'm just gonna get off the taxi now so i just take a walk to the gate uh and then i don't even remember if we, we had to have permission to leave campus i think we did but to go just outside i remember there was like a corner shop uh, we could we could walk i remember we could get outside and come back in oh was it I don't remember. I don't remember ever making up a story of where I'm going um, to see Mfundo. And I don't remember him being in campus. But I remember us sitting outside the gate uh, of the campus, just sitting under, there was this tree, chatting and chatting, you know. Um, I've been looking at the wrong side. Um, and then, yeah, I realized our thing is getting serious, you know, and he's not Adventist, you see. Um, you know, because I grew up knowing, hey, you marry, marry, you know what I mean? Do not be equally unyoked with, eh? do not be unequally yoked with, un with non-believers. I'm like, hey, no, Pella, Ish. guys, we're getting serious. You know, I'm telling my friends, hey, this guy, we're getting serious, but, and we can't, we can't continue. Like, 
I wasn't thinking of it going far because nothing had ever lasted, you know. I don't know, but nothing ever lasted, you know. <laughs> That's the other thing about the culture of dating back home. Uh, relationships don't last, you know, <laughs> um, when you are young anyway, I guess, because I don't know. Yeah, um, and here I've seen like even, you know, uh, in the UK, people can date from high school and then they get married. It's like, whoa. I do have one friend, I do have a viewer and Nanana who dated in high school and they're married now, but it's very rare. People break up, like, you know, okay, people go out, they break up, they go out, they break up, someone else break up, someone else break up. So that's what you, you expect that, oh, we're gonna break up, we're gonna break up, yeah, yeah. So, um, I, yeah, I realized this, okay, this thing is getting serious and I cannot have anything serious going on with this guy. Um, you know, I'm going into metric now or was I in metric by then? Cause I remember, I think I met him towards the end of the year. I don't know, or mid year or early year. I do not remember, but I just remember it felt like we were going on for, we were going out for ages and it was very serious. And I thought, you know what? I need to be kind to this guy. I cannot keep going on cause I know I do not intend to marry this guy. And we were sort of talking marriage here and there. This guy was sweet and he was cute. The guy was handsome, tall, dark, handsome, humble, treated me like a queen, respected me. This guy was everything except he was an Adventist. So I was like, hey, I don't know, guys. I don't know. You know, it was like a big thing. Hey, hi. No, let me... um. I ended things. Oh, pum pum do. Hey guys, that was painful. I could see he was crushed. Mfundo didn't deserve that. Mfundo didn't deserve that. But I felt, you know, he didn't deserve me pulling him along either. If I, if I didn't, if I knew, I'm not gonna marry him. Yeah. What happened? Towards the end of the following year, I was asked out by a guy. This guy had been asking me out since I moved to Bethel. I won't mention his name. Since I moved to Bethel College, this guy had been asking me out. Okay, so Bethel College, like Helderberg, lots of staff houses. So, of course, the staff members have children, i.e. us. So there was quite a lot of Anyway, all the boys were asking me out, to be honest. This guy had been asking me out the year I got to Bethel, but I just was not having it. And then they moved. I don't know where they went, but they moved from Bethel before the end of that year, 94. Now he's in Cape Town. I think it was at UCT. He's in Cape Town and then we meet. Now we are, you know what I mean? Uh, this is now 98. This is now four years later. We meet. Hey, hey. I don't even remember where we met. Ooh, now, of course, now I'm ready. I'm like, hey, this is even an Adventist. I was scared to even date him because, like, I, I felt intimidated by the guy, okay? I was quite intimidated by the Bethel kids, period, okay? I was telling the kids the other day, um, I found being at Bethel completely intimidating. Uh, maybe that's a, that's a story for another day but you know i had an inferiority complex um and i always i always have envied my sister and my brother you know they were always confident and knew confident in their own skin knew themselves you know we had um there's this friend of ours he's a friend now he's a he's a very good guy now he used to always criticize lesotho he, like he was just he always looked down upon us because we we're from lesotho <laughs> So as a result, like I was even afraid to speak. Like when I got there, everybody went to multiracial schools and everybody, you know, the English was on another level. Okay. I had been to schools where my English was the best, <laughs> was one of the best. <laughs> okay. Now I get here, people go to white schools, people, people sound white. And at that age, I found it completely intimidating. There were people who didn't sound white. Who were fine but i had all sorts of things like i think uh, adolescents as well you know just going through a lot of things you know 
I just found the Bethel people just intimidating. So I think I still had that thing like, oh, I still remember how I found, how intimidating I found this guy because he was so confident. So now we meet in Cape Town. I was like, oh my word. I'm like, okay, why not? So he was friends with my friend's boyfriend. So yeah, so we started a relationship. Now this guy now goes to my church. This guy was amazing. This guy was everything, everything. Okay. I found him attractive now, you know, not because I thought he looked good, but he was an attractive person, very attractive personality, forward thinking. Like this guy thought like a millionaire, like, you know, it was like, Jack was like, oh, this guy, hold up. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm 17. I, this guy was so ahead, so ahead of his time. The way he thought, I think he's like a millionaire now or something because he was always business opportunities this that you know he he thought like that this guy the only downside this guy wanted sex this guy knew how i felt about sex before marriage here i was thinking now i'm with someone who understands where i come from i even quoted verses guys every time we met okay there was a few times with this guy that we, I snuck out of of school. We went to see a friend. We, we went to see a friend in Cape Town. <laughs> My friend and I. <laughs> we didn't even stay. We went to see these, these boys. I spent the night. Did I spend the night there? I think so. But guys, I promise you, <laughs> nothing happened. Yeah? <laughs> But I was under so much pressure. I was under so much pressure from this guy. This guy, every time, he just wanted to get into my pants. Every time. Man, it got exhausting. Like, I just felt, you know what? After that weekend, the weekend happened, like, much later into the relationship. But that weekend, I'm telling you, um, we may not have gone all the way, but it was pretty close. And I felt myself that I am gonna do this for him, to get him off my back. And by God's grace, I didn't. I didn't, like, cause, cause also I was, I was very scared of being pregnant. That's the only reason I didn't go ahead. I was, man, the body was ready. The body wanted to, the mind was saying no, but the body was like, please, yes, please give it to me. But man, I was like, I and then I just like, in the middle, I'm like, but what about God? We're going to disappoint God. Man, we had a, we sat down. Yeah. We sat down talking. He's trying to convince me. He's like, look, you are going to do this anyway. You're going to do this anyway. Wouldn't you rather do it for the first time with someone you love? Hey, he made sense. But I'm like, but... But it's a sin. You know, so eventually I ended that relationship because I was under so much pressure. I was like, no, man. Guys, that was the only reason I broke up with him because he wanted to sleep with me and I wasn't ready. And I was thinking my days. Here I am now with this one. This one from my, my church. This one that I'm like, we are on the same. We are equally, what? Equally yoked. Now he's giving me so much pressure. There was a guy who was unequally yoked that I dumped. The guy was so nice. The guy respected my wishes. The guy was not pushing me to do things I didn't like. The guy respected me. The guy was perfect. So anyway, I just came to share. I just thought I'll just share this memory with you guys. The struggles the struggles that young people, I know you young people go through the struggles, but just hold on, okay? Let me just say, be pure, keep yourself pure. Do not do anything, do not pressurize yourself to do anything you're not ready to do, okay? And yes, it is valid. It may seem out of fashion now, it is valid to do, to make your, your choices based on God's wishes for you and God's will 
and what you know will make God proud, you know? It will also make you proud. There's a reason God has said to keep ourselves until marriage. There's a reason God has said not to be sexually involved outside marriage. There is a reason, you know, God is so wise. He knows everything. Sometimes it's after we've done these things that only in hindsight, we look back and we're like, wow, Lord. So this is why you said not to do that. So if you are keeping yourself pure, male, female, it doesn't matter what your friends say, how they laugh at you or what, stand your ground, know yourself and confidently walk in your own truth, confidently walk in your own beliefs. They are valid. They are valid. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that little story from myself um take care of yourselves i'm home alone the kids are back at school uh day two today i don't know it still feels safe somehow because it's pretty quiet otherwise except for the fact that you know kids are back at school um i don't know they were saying some some of their friends are hugging and stuff <sighs> so anywho we shall see what happens but um Lord knows I need this alone time at home. You know, I've just been spending time with him and just doing my thing. Uh, but yeah, I, I believe uh, the, the, the risk is really low uh, looking at the West Australia um, stats and just the Australia statistics as a whole. I feel like um, it is a risk worth taking, um, taking uh, kids back to school. Yeah, we just pray things. Um, uh, we pray things get less uh, hectic uh, and in your country, you know, I hope you're keeping safe and I hope things get sorted out soon. But yeah, I just hope that this nightmare, this lockdown nightmare comes to an end um, fairly soon. Yeah, we probably have until December or something until things can get back to normal. But um, yeah, just take care of yourself and um, yes, remember to put God first. In all your decisions, okay? In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord and He will direct your path. Thanks for watching. Love you. But remember that God loves you even more. Ciao, ciao. Hello. You watched everything. Thank you so much for watching everything. Now, don't forget to subscribe and go back to my other videos and scroll and scroll and scroll and watch everything. There's very good things in here, very good interesting things. You are number one, number one. Now, thank you and take care of yourself.